welcome to Focusing on God's Word with Pastor Everton Jeffers. Focusing on God's Word illuminates the Word of God by explaining the Scriptures and conducting word studies using Scripture to support Scripture in the revelation of His Word. Matthew eleven fifteen said, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. As he ministered to us today, here now is Pastor Everton Jeffers. Pleasant good day once again to all of my friends, all of my listening and viewing audience. I want to take this opportunity to say to all of you, God bless you and keep you. Today, I want to also say a very special thanks to the sponsors of the program. I want to reiterate that without you, uh, this program would not have been possible. And I want you to know also that this program is reaching many. Many have called, many have met me in the supermarket on the road, and have told me how this program has been an inspiration to them. And so I want you as the sponsor to know that your money is going into kingdom building. Your money is going into seeing the kingdom of God grows and develop. And once again, I want to say to you a very special thanks and pray that God will continue to keep you and bless you in all of your doing. Today I want to speak on this subject. Why is God taking so long to return? Many people today have accused the Christians by saying that so long we've been saying that Jesus Christ is going to return and up to this day he has not returned as yet. Some have even called us foolish for thinking that there is a God and others think that Christianity is outdated. I want to make this absolutely clear this morning that Christianity is the most up-to-date and not only up-to-date but futuristic biblical phenomenon that a lot of people don't understand. Christianity does not deal with simply the past only, but Christianity deals with the past, the present, and the future. And so for those of you who think that Christianity is outdated, you need to check again because you would recognize that many of the things that the Bible prophesied or spoke about are presently happening in our midst and some of them have not happened as yet which tells me that my faith is current and not outdated as some of you might think as we also look around The other thing that we need to pay attention to is how much of what was predicted in Scripture is happening before our very eyes. The signs of Christ's second return is everywhere. So the obvious question is, which is the topic for this message, why is it then it is taking so long for God to return, or for Christ to return, if some of you prefer that term. In 2 Peter chapter 3, beginning at verse 3, 
we will see as we go down the verses why it appears as if Jesus is taking an awful long time to return but we will see why and we will also see what we consider to be a long time in Christ's eyes or in God's eye it's a pretty short time so let's look at why it appears if our master is taking a long time to return and verse 3 says this first of all no Peter wanted his readers to know this he says first of all no and he wanted us to know without any doubt that mockers will come in the last days with their mockings following after their own human desires and that is exactly what is happening Peter clearly said it there I want believers to know that mockers will come and there should not be any doubt in our minds when we see these things happen as Christians when we hear these things happening there should be no doubt in our minds that Christ's return is somewhere around the corner the Bible also made it clear in what period these mockers will come now I want to make it known that mockers were there before but as we approach Christ's second return the Bible clearly stipulates that they will come during the last days and the question is which last days and when did these last days begun for those of you who are not clear on it the last days began after Jesus returned to his father and so from that time mockers keep coming mocking the Christian faith passing all sorts of remarks about the faith and Peter say it will happen so we as believers should not be surprised when it does what we are seeing is that as time gets closer we will see more and more of them what this should solidify for us as believers is that each time one of them open their mouth to deny Christ's second return he's simply confirming the Word of God the Bible predicted it will happen it is happening it will continue to happen and it will get worse as the time of Christ's second return gets closer verse 4 says saying where is the promise of his coming listen to their question where is this promise that we have heard about that Christ is going to return what has become of it we've been hearing it so long why is it not happening I want to make this known to every child of God that once God makes a promise that promise is going to come to pass doesn't matter how long it takes that promise is going to come to pass now what promise 
are they asking about? And if we look at the book of John 14, we will see the promise that these mockers are asking about. In John 14, beginning at verse 2, this is what it says. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, verse 4, and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now from the moment Jesus uttered that word out of his mouth, that became law. Jesus cannot promise anything and not fulfill it. And so for those of us who are children of God, in spite of how long it may seem, we have a hope because Jesus said he went back to prepare a place for us and where he is, there we will be also. And so we see that based on that promise, that should give each and every believer the greatest hope. It is not that the place has not already been prepared because I believe it's already prepared for us. But God has a time when that prepared place will be made available to us. And we're going to see that. We're going to see exactly why the delay is happening. And those who believe that it's not going to happen will be shocked when it happened. For ever since the fathers fell asleep, ever since Abraham, Isaac, Jacob fell asleep, in that all things have continued exactly as they did from the beginning of creation. That is not true. Those mockers are liars. If you look at the past and the future, you will clearly recognize that these people are not speaking the truth. Because each year, what we are seeing is that things in every country seems to be getting worse and worse. And so there is no accuracy in them saying that since the fathers fell asleep in debt, that things have remained the same. Things have gotten really, really, really worse. Worse than it has ever been before. But those of us as believers, we are not happy that things have gotten worse to the extent, but because things have gotten worse, we know without a shadow of a doubt that Christ's promise to us is closer than when we first began because he predicted it. He prophesied about it. If you look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 5, it will tell you how bad things have become around the world. And for those of you who think that it is bad, hold on, because it's still going to get worse than it is at this present time. Why is he taking so long to come? Verse 5 says, For they will willingly forget the fact it's a known fact that the heavens existed long ago by the word of God. Darwin and, and all the theories that are around are totally inaccurate. The world came into being by God say so, by the word of God. God spoke and the world came into being. 
The Bible says, so they willingly forget that the heavens existed long ago by the word of God, and the earth was formed out of water and by water. Now, a lot of people don't understand this and try to find all sorts of difficult explanation for this. When it is simply stated in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 6, what this actually means. Let me simplify it for you based on the Bible, not based on something that I think, but based on the Bible. It was formed out of water and by water. And the Bible says it is not something that they don't know. In Genesis, as I said, 1-6, when God spoke things into being, and we know God does not create chaos, it says that the world was thing and void. And then listen to what he says in verse 6. You can read from verses 1 to 5, but I want to focus on verse 6 and listen to what it says there. Let there be a firmament in the midst of the water, and let it divide the waters from the waters. So what was happening is that everything was surrounded by water. The earth was void. But we know that God does not create confusion. And so what he did, he simply said, let the firmament in the midst of the water, let it divide the waters from the water. So what he actually did was to call earth into being, separating the land from the waters above and the waters beneath. That is what it meant when he says, it was formed out of water. Simple. There's no big highfalutin explanation to it. It's right there. You can read it for yourself. And so he says that they willingly forget. They know, but willingly, you know, people with selective amnesia, those mockers, that's exactly what they're doing. Through which, verse 6, the world at that time was destroyed by being flooded with water. Matthew 24, 39. They did not know until the flood came and carried them all away. Now in Genesis 7, 12, and I'm, I'm just putting these in, laying the foundation because we're going to have part two, I believe, to this and maybe part three. But let's just put it together. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights. That was the destruction of that world back then. Look at what God did. When God looked at what happened after the flood, he made a promise. By his word, by God saying so, the present heaven and the earth are being reserved God is saying that right now, this present heaven and earth are kept for a particular purpose and day and for a particular set of people to the extent. What he's saying is that this heaven and earth in its present state is being reserved for judgment. It will be destroyed by fire. And not only is this present heaven and earth awaiting that judgment, but also the ungodly people, the mockers also will be dealt with on that particular day, on, in that particular time. So this earth and this present heaven is reserved for a particular time and its destruction will include a particular group of people. The world that was destroyed by flood, God promised it will not happen that way again. So this time, his promise is that it will be destroyed by fire. Now let me put this in quickly for those who think that 
uh, there is no hope for them. God has already made everything that you and I need to live for him. God has already paid the price for you that he needed to pay for your salvation. So if you find yourself in this ungodly group, if you find yourself as one of those mockers, then you cannot blame God, but you only have yourself to blame. If you notice that he's delaying, you need to ask yourself, why is he delaying? And I'm gonna give you a portion today and then a portion next week, and you will see exactly what is happening. Verse eight says, nevertheless, do not let this one fact escape your notice. Beloved, that with the Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Let me make this simple. God lives outside of time. God doesn't work with time. So when we start counting days and think that it's a thousand days or a thousand years, for God, it's just like a day. He lives outside of time. If you notice, God speaks things into being. Then set time for things to happen. Now, when Peter quoted this particular um, verse, this verse was taken from Psalm 90 and verse 4, and that's what he says. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday, time pass, or as a watch in the night, So we, we're seeing here with God, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. It doesn't matter to God. He lives outside of time. The verse I want to dig into and focus on to answer the question, why is it that the Lord seems to be taking so long? Let's look at what the verse has to say verse 9 the Lord does not delay as though he's unable to act I want you to notice this his delay is not as though he's unable to act and it is not slow about his promise as some consider a count slowness Some people are saying, why? why is he taking so long? Why is he so slow to come? Some Christians are trying to hasten. And some people are trying to use the situation to say, listen, he's not coming again. But there's a reason why God is patient. And I'm going ahead of myself here. I want to show you exactly why God appears to be slow in acting. Here are some of the reasons why Jesus has not returned as yet. And I told you that God, once he makes a promise, he's going to stick to it. In Matthew 24, 9, this is what he says. Then they will hand you over to endure tribulation and will put you to death and you will be hated by all nations because of me. Let me say this to you. Although this is happening in some Middle Eastern countries, if you notice, this is very rare in most of our Western Hemisphere. We as believers, we live in peace. We practice our religion in peace. But what the Bible is making clear, and it is beginning to happen, that in that day, they will hand you over to endure tribulation. And if you watch what is happening in the States, how Christianity is being pushed onto the back burner for everything else. We all know once that starts happening in Europe and in the United States, we are... Um, 
um, as Caribbean people are going to get the flu. Because everything we catch from there. And so it is saying, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. Notice that is not happening as yet. And because God has predicted that, that is going to happen. Then that must happen before his return takes place. We are not hated as yet in this Western Hemisphere, killed basically for our religious belief, but I want to make this lucid. The time is quickly coming when our Christian faith is going to cause us to live. And the Bible is predicting that this is going to happen as the time of Christ's second return gets closer. So those of us who are enjoying the freedom now, let's spread the gospel now because there is coming a time right around the curve when what is going to happen is that to live the Christian life, our lives would be in danger. It will cause some of us uh, um, debt. And what will happen also is that Many of the people sometimes that we call friends will probably turn us over to those people. The second thing that we need to understand is that at that time, many will be offended and repelled by the association with me and will fall away from the one whom they should trust and will betray one another, handing over believers to their persecutors and will hate one another. This is a fact. As I said, some of it has already started and it is getting progressively worse and it is spreading. We need to make sure that we watch these things and pay specific attention to them because they're happening and what they're doing as they happen is reminding us that the word of God stands sure. And in verse 35 of the same 24, Matthew 24, it says, heaven and earth as now known will pass away, but my word will not pass away. That's what I'm saying to you. Once God predicted it, it's going to happen regardless of what you think. I'm going to go into three What's the third reason why it appears as if the master is delaying and not coming? The third reason, it says many false prophets will appear and mislead many. I, I want you to notice the Bible was not mincing matters with words. It says many false prophets will appear and mislead many. Now, I want you to notice what is happening today. Before everybody wanted to be a pastor or bishop, do you notice the proliferation of prophets nowadays? It had to happen because those are the people that are going to lead God's people away. Now, I believe in the fivefold ministry, so please don't get the wrong idea. But you have to have this proliferation of people who call themselves prophets. Because the Bible says that many false prophets will appear and they are appearing. But guess what? It is not as it will be as time gets closer. Many more will come. And notice what? Many will come and mislead also many. Some people say, well, this happened already. Let me tell you. Yes, we have false prophets before who mis misled many but in comparison to what happened back then the situation around the world will get even worse we see them on youtube we see them on television we see them moving from country to country and we know that even the doctrine that some of them are teaching we know it's not lining up with scripture 
But the Bible said that in those days, last days, before Christ's return, that you will have many of them, those false prophets, misleading many. If you think what happened in, in Guyana and in the States with David Koresh is huge, wait until these guys begin to act. Then you will know that the Bible is accurate and the most up-to-date book you can find anywhere. Let's look at another reason why the master has not returned as yet. And this is what it says. Because lawlessness is increased, the love of most people will grow cold. You, you, you can imagine today a man would look at a man and decide that, hey, listen, look you right in your face, in your eye, and pull a gun and shoot you, just as that. Stab you to death, sometimes for no real reason. This is in keeping with the Bible. Because lawlessness is increased, if you look around, some of the very things we never thought could have happened before, guess what? They're happening today right before our eyes. And we're wondering what is happening? Bible is being fulfilled in our present, in our midst. That's the reason why it appears if there is a delay. It's not a delay. God has already set his time. And those things that he said are going to happen are actually happening without people recognizing it. Let me touch one more as I close this chapter or portion for today. Verse 14 says, This good news of the kingdom, the gospel, will be preached throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end of the age will come. Do you see this? The gospel is, yes, being preached around the world, but notice what it says. It will be preached throughout the whole world. There are some areas that have not been reached as yet. And so, because Christ said that it had to, it had to happen, that the good news of the gospel will be preached throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end of the age will come, then it, this must happen. The gospel must go around the world to all the nations wherever they exist and then the bible says only when this gospel is preached to the entire world as a testimony telling of god's goodness and of his love it says only after that happened Christ's coming or the end of the world will come. What I am going to do today is to conclude part one of this message now and to ask those of you who don't have a relationship with Christ at this moment to ask Jesus Christ to come into your life today. Part two will make Kit pellucid as to exactly why he has not returned as yet. When you see it, you would be shocked. It's because of you why he has not returned as yet. He's waiting on you. May you make that decision for Christ today before it's eternally too late. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to Focusing on God's Word with Pastor Everton Jeffers, a Bible-based study revealing the Word of God. You can follow Pastor Jeffers on God's First Radio at 102.9 FM 
from 1 p.m. each Sunday or on Abundant Life Radio at 103.9 FM. You can also follow him on Facebook or the YouTube channel. Thank you once again for listening to Focusing on God's Word. May God continue to bless you.